Travel expenses for Computex paid for by ASRock. Thanks, ASRock. ASRock was also showing off their mini PCs. The X600 Desk Meet, this is an AM5 based system. This configuration has Kingston DDR5-5600 and a Ryzen 7 8700G, 500 watt power supply, and they've got it configured with the ARC A380 Challenger that we were taking a look at earlier. This is the updated version of the, uh, the mini PC that I took a look at last year, and this looks pretty formidable. Then we got the Desk Mini X600, which I recently reviewed. Be sure to check that out. That's a pretty capable little AM5 system as well. It's upgradable. And this is the Jupiter X600. Now this is a slim system, but you can see you've got quite a bit of different connectivity at the back. Looks like it's configured for dual display port plus HDMI. You've got a, a USB connection, maybe USB 4, RS-232 serial, Ethernet. It's some more USB. Looks like you got some room internally for some fun stuff. Maybe room internally for a U.2 drive here. I'm not really sure. It doesn't say on the little card. And here's the Mars 1335U. This is an Intel Core i5 1335 DDR5. It's a nice little stand-up chassis. It's a lot of air coming out the back. So you get SD card slot, USB 4, USB four USB ports at the front. Then at the rear we've got VGA, another Type C combination headphone, microphone, HDMI, dual USB, and two and a half gig Ethernet. On this side, it looks like we've got some more configurations of the Mars system, including an AMD 7530 based configuration. Looks like it also features USB 4. This is a better view of the, uh, the IO ports. So you got VGA and HDMI, dual five gigabit USB, Ethernet, power, headphone, and microphone. This is a 65 watt power adapter. And the 1335U is also 65 watts for the Intel version. Does you get the little red accent or the blue accent? That's pretty cool. Then you got the Jupiter H10. So this is the Intel version of the Jupiter. It's one SATA 6 gigabit per second port, 12280 Gen 4, 12280 Gen 3. You got a 12230 for a Wi Fi or Bluetooth module. That's CNBI. One display port, 8K 60 hertz. One display port, 4K 60 hertz. Or it could be a, a VGA if you want that configuration. One HDMI. And then you've got some front I.O. for headphone, microphone, and everything else. Very similar configuration over here in terms of your expandability. This is a DDR4 platform for the Intel. For the AMD platform, it is a DDR5 memory configuration uh, for the AMD platform. And then we've got the Desk Mini B760, which we've, you know, nothing new there, really. And then the X600 that I just reviewed, this, but in black. And then your your different versions of your desk meet, your B760 and your X600. It's Intel versus AMD. It's kind of the theme for the show. You know what we need with all these mini PCs and mini motherboards? A Snapdragon mini PC with ARM. It's ARM 30. So this is ASRock's Grace Hopper solution. It, it has PCIe connectivity for Connect X7 or Bluefield or whatever kind of accelerator that you want to install. I mean, heck, you can put an FPGA in there if you wanted to, but this is it. This is the motherboard. So they really packed a lot in this chassis. Look, there's E1.S storage. You could do redundant E1.S in this time. This isn't even, this is like a half depth. This is less than half depth. This is like a third depth. There's a lot of options for density here, and this is designed for air cooling. So you got all the MCIO connectors and all the external power, the Intel, <laughs> Intel Cyclone 10. Wait a minute that Grace plus Hopper. This is ASRock's NVIDIA GB200 NV72. 72 GPUs in a single rack. This is, of course, built at NVIDIA's specifications, but this is a hell of a lot of compute in a single rack. This is also the rack that Jensen signed. So NVIDIA has basically had to partner with everybody that knows what they're doing in order to build this uh, AI future that we find ourselves in because that's the only way you're going to get the volume. You literally need everybody working full tilt over time building something like this in order to improve 30 times every generation because there's just no other option. I mean, new interconnects, new GPUs, new memory architecture, new protocols on the wire, it's all needed in order to be able to pull off something like this. 
it's kind of wild. So this is the NVIDIA ASRock rack, or the ASRock rack with the NVIDIA MGX. And this is the standard 5U configuration. So you've got all the GPUs with the crossbar connector. NB Link. The NB Link 3? NB Link 8. 8, wow, you can, okay. You can do it in 8. So all four of these GPUs are connected. They share the same VRAM pool, effectively. And you've still got plenty of PCIe for Bluefield or other connectivity. And then there are, is this a single node? No, that is for the LAN expansion. Wow, that's a lot of connectivity. Yeah, like mid core or GPUs. And then of course power, what, yeah. 2200 watts each? That is for 2700. 2700. Each power supply is 2,700 watts in this chassis, so it's really designed to suck back the power, but you've got all the PCIe connectivity you could ever need. And then you've got air cooling at the front. And this chassis has a ton of E1.S storage. So you can have a very large storage array, you know, something like a quarter petabyte. Yeah, 16 possible E1.S. And then imagine you have a full rack of these. It's probably close to $10 million of equipment. <laughs> so this one, this chassis is very similar to the air-cooled chassis that we saw before, but it's configured for B100, and the other chassis was named B200, but this one is designed for air-cooling, and it can actually keep up in terms of air-cooling, but it does require a minimum of 6U in order to operate. And then you've got eight 2,700-watt power supplies, that's definitely going to require a couple of breakers in order to run.